Hey guys, we're here at Lights Out 14 in Valdosta, Georgia, and I came up with this new concept called Five Questions with Somebody Famous-ish. The whole premise of it is to ask questions that you would like to hear the answers to, to people who you might not normally be able to ask those questions to. And since we're at a drag radio race, our first person is going to be none other than Stevie Fast Jackson himself. Uh, five Questions with Somebody Famous-ish. Ish. 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 You're more on the famous side than this. Well, maybe if there's famous here, or maybe like about 3% on the famous side. Maybe I. <laughs> well, you definitely know how to make things go fast, so. And I know how to blow them up. I don't know how to make them quit running, too. So Greatness, you, you ever seen 10 Cup? Greatness courts failure, Romeo. Just remember that. So if you're living under a rock, Stevie Fast Jackson, the man behind drag radial racing, I mean, you're a lot of the reason why it's grown to where it is today. Man, I, I love radial tire racing, and I love small tire racing, but mostly I love the folks that run radial tire. Uh, it's been a fun journey. Yep. Uh, kind of more on the pro mod side these days, but you're, it seems like you're back this weekend and doing a lot more. So. Well, I kicked everybody's ass over here, so then I went over there and kicked everybody's ass, so now I'm going to come back over here and let them get biggity again, and I'll go back over there. You know, I mean, these can't keep kicking them in the head while they're down. you got to love them stand up. All right, so we do have five questions. They're not all about racing, but I'll start with the first one. What is Stevie Fast's favorite race car of all times that you've had? Absolutely, 100% the old orange car, brother. Okay. It's, it's twofold because, like, you got to say, okay, the original Shadow, right? But the old orange car, man, that's where it all started. Like, the nitro that was That was where you had a nitro piranha, like where you were just blowing it up all the time and blowing the roof off of it. Uh you know, I'd have to say the old the old orange car followed right behind the first shadow. Yep, Pro Charge, Big Block Chevy. Pro, Pro Charge Wedge with whatever head Summit had at the time on a shelf. A bunch of junk, a scat crank, and some junk rods and everything else. And I'm gonna, looking back now and the way we prepare to race now, I have no idea how we made it to the start line twice, ever. <laughs> <laughs> that car was like the first of the 430s, 20s. That something. car was the first of the 70s, the first of the 60s, the first of the 50s, the first to the teens, and then I think that was it. That's when you pretty, went to the shadow. Yeah, I think pretty much I missed a couple of a couple of tents there. Yeah. It wasn't the 20s. Kenny Hubbard was the first of the 20s. Mm. Gave me a postcard that says that, and it's still sitting on my refrigerator in my shop because I wanted that one pretty bad. That's good motivation. Yes. All right, so these days you find yourself tuning a lot of people's cars. Tuning or driving, what's your favorite thing to do? Depends on the event. Uh, here, tuning 100%. This race is like 95 days long, <laughs> and you're wore out by Wednesday. Uh, tuning. Sometimes you want to go out there and you just want to drive because you missed the competition of it. Uh, right now, tuning, uh, as soon as my neck gets healed up, I'm ready to get back in the seat. What in the world? What's up, buddy? Good and bad. What you got there? Do you think that because I haven't had enough cheese balls that this is why my car has been running slow? Do you think this is the fuel that we need to get the thing in the game? This joker brings me a bucket of cheese balls every single race. <laughs> and if the car's not running good, he'll come by and he'll tell me, eat a few more cheese balls to put in that thing. <laughs> You're a man. He just stopped an interview because he wanted to get you he yeah, wanted to give you a knuckles. And I seen you out here and stopped oh. doing the deal to come out here and see you. Good deal. It's good to see y'all. It's going to be a good race this race. Can you tell him we watch all of his podcasts? Good. Thank you. What you like? Who do you, who's your favorite Farmer Fran segment that I've had on there before? Who do you like to see me make fun of most? Huh? Okay. Who do you want me to make fun of in the next one? Okay. All right. <laughs> I got it. I got it. No problem. Covered. I got it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Got your cheese balls. <laughs> All right, next question. What keeps you up at night other than Kenny Hubbard's postcard for your 420? What mishap? keeps me up at night is all the shit that I didn't get finished the previous day. Um, what, the only things I really worry about in life are uh, my airplane crashing. <laughs> so that keeps me up some at night. And then, uh, you know, just not being, not being relevant at the current series you're racing in. The biggest fear I have is the one day in whatever years show up at one of these races and all of a sudden realize that you're not relevant in the sport. And I've always said that I'll drive these things until you're no longer relevant and I mean it. And uh, I'll, I'll think about like one day there's gonna be a time where like I suck at it and I'm too old to do it. And I'm gonna get me a kid, I'm gonna go out there and just pick me somebody out of the stands and put them in the car and let them rip. <laughs> all right, next question. You kind of already answered it, but will you ever radio race again now that you're back, you know, kind of bounce around? From 100%. Uh, this radio racing, some of the radio racing out here has gotten a little soft in my absence. So I'm going to have to put my cowboy hat on and come back out here and do some do some ass kicking. 
Uh, tune in for Timmy this weekend. Me and Timmy Meisner, we think a lot alike, and uh, he's basically a tool to go uh, get me what I want right now. But, yeah, I'm coming back ready to race him for sure. <laughs> All right, I know that said five questions, but I got one final one. All right. Would you rather tell Jay Cox he's your hero or drive a turbo car? I'd rather drive a turbo car because if I ever said that, like, if I ever, I can't even say what I would be saying if I said that, but, like, you just can't blasphemy like that. The Bible talks about telling lies like that. There's, like, <laughs> permanent consequences. I mean, if you put Jay Cox and Keith Haney in a boat and it sunk, there'd be about three people that miss them. <laughs> we'll see if they watch this YouTube channel. <laughs> That's bad. I do like Jay Cox's enthusiasm, and I do like uh, beating the shit out of him. He beat me one time, one race ever. I think, like, my nitrous solenoid fell off or something. He still tells me about it. And Keith Haney, same thing. He beat me one time with the shadow because the transmission didn't shift. And, like, I guarantee you, if you go in his house, he's got, like, a life-size picture of the scoreboards from that race for the one round he won in 40 years. So, both of them are uh, pretty good. I can't – I want to I wanna go race where they're at just because I like kicking the shit out of them. Well, there you go, guys. That was a bonus round. Bonus round. This is a segment that delivers. Stevie Bass Jackson. There we go. Good luck this weekend.